There have been a lot of questions recently about how the church is called to respond to politicians who claim a Catholic faith but push forward anti-life legislation. Take, for example, earlier this year, we saw New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, who claims to be Catholic, sign one of the most extreme abortion laws in the nation, the Reproductive Health Act, which allows abortion up until birth. And here on Capitol Hill, 10 senators who identify as Catholic voted against the Born Alive bill in February. And just last week, New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy, who considers himself a lifelong practicing Catholic, signed a bill into law authorizing medically assisted suicide. He said he made the decision after careful consideration and prayer. To help us break this all down, we are joined by two Catholic canon lawyers who both happen to be my colleagues. Coming to us via Skype from Denver, Colorado, is J.D. Flynn, the editor-in-chief of Catholic News Agency. And with us in studio is Ed Condon, the D.C. Bureau Chief for Catholic News Agency. Thank you both for being here. Thanks so much for having us. So there are a lot of questions that have been raised concerning excommunication. So first off, can you, our canon lawyers, give us a clear definition as to what excommunication is? So excommunication is definitely a penalty. It's a penalty the church imposes legally on its subjects. Subjects are members of the church, those who are baptized Catholics. Now, it's important to understand that a penalty in the church can be one of two ways. Either it's a penalty that's a punishment. The idea is to punish someone for doing wrong. But the other thing that is, in this case, excommunication, is it's a medicinal penalty. Its purpose is not to inflict damage on someone, but it's to call them back to conversion. It's to really hopefully prick their conscience and lead them back to the church. Earlier this year, 10 senators who identify as Catholic voted against the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. This bill would provide medical care to babies who survive abortions. So why is excommunication appropriate or not appropriate for these senators in this case? J.D., what's your take? Well, I think um, for us as canon lawyers and for us as Catholics, it's really not so much our place to judge what is the appropriate penalty so much as what is the penalty that the church prescribes. The church teaches that those who um, advance uh, an agenda that is inconsistent with life or an agenda that's um, willfully harmful to life should face a consequence for that because they're obstinately persevering in, in, in manifest grave sin, the church says. But um, the question of whether or not they would be excommunicated is a, a rather technical question and one that um, is really uh, up to the pope to decide as the, as the supreme legislator of the church. Uh, did you have any thoughts in addition to that? Yeah, I mean, I would agree with everything J.D. just said. The important thing to remember when we're talking about excommunication is it's a legal penalty for a legal action. Now, you can have legislators, you can have Catholics of all kinds in any position who are doing things that the church says are gravely immoral, supporting ideas that are gravely immoral, but this isn't necessarily a canonical crime. Excommunication is a canonical penalty for a canonical crime. We often have a sort of emotional use of the word where we think of it as it's just the way the church should punish people, but it's very specifically a legal term for a legal procedure for a legal action. Okay, so moving now from Capitol Hill to the governor's mansion, there are really unique circumstances surrounding New York Governor Andrew Cuomo and his signing of the Reproductive Health Act into law, allowing abortion up until birth. What is the church's response here in this particular case? It, it has been the response of the, the bishops of New York um, to, to recognize that Governor Cuomo has... Uh, it has acted in a way that, that will lead to uh, more abortions, has acted in a way that's contrary to the good of life. And a lot of Catholics have called for the, our, the bishops of New York, and especially Cardinal Dolan, to respond more concretely, um, perhaps to apply Canon 915, which would restrict the, recep the reception of Holy Communion. Catholics have also called for excommunication, and it's understandable why, because I think we all want to see consequences mm -hmm. to what has happened. We all want to see that the church takes seriously a pro-choice politician um, really flaunting his Catholic faith and holding himself out as a Catholic while acting so contrary to the gospel. But the question for the Archbishop of, of New York to decide and, and the bishops of New York to discuss is how they can, um, in the context of canon law, apply a stern and just consequence um, to, to this action. Ed? I think that's right. I mean, in the case of Governor Cuomo, there are some extenuating circumstances. Um, as J.D. said, he has his actions have contributed to more abortions being able to take place. Um, he's also been very clear that he is a Catholic. He's been very clear that he considers himself to be governing as a Catholic in many circumstances. When he wants to champion different kinds of legislation, he's quick to invoke his Catholicism. And I think this is one thing that does make his situation a little unique, mm -hmm. is he's so keen to link his own legislative agenda to his Catholic faith, 
even though two bishops, in this case Bishop Scharfenberger of Albany and mm -hmm. Cardinal Dolan of New York, um, issued public warnings to him before the passage of um, this, uh, this abortion act, and he went ahead anyway. Now, I think the interesting thing here is at a certain point, if someone's holding themselves out as a Catholic, saying, what I am doing, I am doing not just as a Catholic, but because I'm a Catholic, then at that point, they're damaging the community of the faith. They're damaging the faith of other people. Speaking of governors, what about New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy, who just signed an assisted suicide bill into law? He identifies as Catholic and said he made this decision after praying about it. Yeah, here, here is another case where a Catholic governor, he is a Catholic, and a Catholic governor has said that his, uh, his faith, his own spiritual life, has led him to make a decision that's inconsistent with the dignity of human life. All Catholics, all of us, I think, are looking for the church to respond with justice, um, with sobriety, um, and with a call to conversion, that call that I discussed um, that is, uh, is a part of excommunication and can be delivered, I think, in, in very serious ways in these, in these cases as well. Mm -hmm. Something that I was thinking when I, when I was reading his comments was, last week Archbishop Chaput um, of Philadelphia gave a speech in which he talked about American Catholics having divided loyalties as we're trying to build a Christian culture in this country, or rebuild a Christian culture mm -hmm. in this country. This is the kind of divided loyalty that he was talking about, and it's the kind of do divided loyalty that Catholics really can't have that in the end, you are a Catholic first and foremost. Your duty is to the gospel, to God, and to life. And to say that your, um, your function as a public servant leads you to act in a way that is not just not consistent with your Catholic faith, but directly against it, is really to say, I'm choosing the world over God. And that is a real problem. Thank you both so much for being here. J.D. Flynn and Ed Condon of Catholic News Agency, we are so grateful to have you both here. Thanks for having, Thanks for having us. You can hear similar conversations between J.D. and Ed on the CNA Newsroom podcast bonus episodes and read J.D., Ed, and the rest of CNA's work at catholicnewsagency.com.